Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And I hope you all are having a great Sunday evening. Uh, wanted to do this video real quick, really fast before I get into Game of Thrones and some of my other Sunday evening television shows. <laughs> but um, I had been a little bit earlier watching this video uh, with Craig Wright, uh, who created Bitcoin, where Craig Wright reveals alleged um, contributors for the first time. Um, and it was very interesting. Um, now I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on this video, but I can tell you that, uh, I haven't really had an emotional connection about the whole Craig Wright being Satoshi thing. Uh, I tend to just kind of look at information, uh, and, and, and kind of let the cards fall where they may. Right. And, um, but this is starting to kind of feel like one of these, um, I guess like you kind of watch these shows where the show will kind of lead you to believe that the good, the good guys are not the bad guys, or you find out that the, that the, uh, that the people you thought were the good guys are actually the bad guys. So it kind of started to feel like that. I thought I watched this video and it was kind of, uh, again, I didn't, I, I always thought that Craig Wright came out off kind of jerkish and I think the first thing that people uh, tend to do is associate your emotional behavior uh, with your accomplishments and, and who you can be. And so uh, an idea, if a person is turned off by you, uh, by how you act in a certain situation, they can sometimes erroneously remove certain characteristics or abilities from you. So in short, um, there, there, there isn't necessarily a correlation between people being jerks and <laughs> and uh, them not necessarily being able to do certain things or accomplish certain things. And, and it seems like someone like Craig Wright, he has a uh, a interesting background with it when it comes to cryptocurrency. He goes into something way back when I remember. He he, he gives the history of e gold little bit and it kind of being a progenitor to many of these ideas like Bitcoin and, and a lot of that history back in the 1990s with a lot of the uh, net the net booms and all that. Uh, so I found that very interesting, the detail he went into. Uh, now, a lot of people um, speculate that Craig Wright was someone who was in the room. And I'm starting to believe that more than ever now. Uh, I'm not going to go into presenting all the evidence. This is like a two-hour video. I'll leave a link in the description. And it's going to go in great detail about that. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly just give some of my personal opinions with what I was able to pick up on in the video. Uh, and kind of uh, contrast to what, to what I see what's happening with, with Bitcoin. So uh, with Craig Wright, so a lot of people think he was maybe part of the Satoshi team. And of course, he's even in this video and even by this title, it seems he's alleging that there were more people involved. Now, seems like he he does always put himself at the forefront as to like maybe he was the mastermind. Maybe that's why he always says things like he's a Satoshi. Right. But then there were there was other people. Now, uh, I can kind of identify with ideas like that for several reasons. Uh, one being that, uh, uh, you know, anytime I've started many businesses, the first thing that I realized was that maybe I was kind of at the top of it uh, or the head of it in some type of CEO capacity. And maybe it was a board of directors and things like that. But it, it would quickly become this type of balance of power, right, where it would be me and a group of these people. And uh, they would have many different personalities about how to go forth with that business. Right. And then it would be a difference in kind of how they presented information out about the business and how I presented information about out about the business. So it would be these different characteristics of that. So a, a lot of times in the discussion about uh, Satoshi has been that, well, his attitude didn't seem like Chris. Well, that could have been because there were certain um, uh, representations of this Satoshi team that was being put out there at the time. Uh, and I find that interesting as well. So uh, it, it just starting up. The next thing I'll say, I'll just put this out here right quick. How easy it is to keep a secret, right? Think about the government. The government can't even keep secrets. You, you take someone like Snowden who just blew the whistle. He had to run to Russia, right? Is it that? Is it, is it, you know, is this Bitcoin thing 
so well done that nobody, you know, even under it. And, and think about this. The government can't even keep secrets and they and, and you're on the threat of, in some cases, treason, execution, uh, a ton of things. And people are still willing to risk uh, their necks to get those secrets out. So that means that it's very difficult to keep a secret uh, and a secret even more non-lethal like this one. <laughs> you know, I would imagine after a decade or more, you would start to see leaks of something of people coming forward saying I'm this or that. And it's very likely that somebody would have the truth in relation to that. Right. So the fact that nobody is thought to be Satoshi or, or knows who Satoshi is or it's, it's been leaked out yet. I find that very difficult to believe as well. Uh, another thing that gets brought up uh, quite a bit, and again, you know, I know a lot of people want to hear the direct evidence, and I have started a study of a lot of the evidence about why I think, I, in fact, I almost participated in a contest with uh, evidence about um, uh, a lot of the past of Craig Wright and his relationship to Bitcoin uh, and certain trusts and certain agreements and certain arrangements that came out. Uh, he, he goes into detail about several other things uh, that uh, are important to that. Um, but I, I'm just going to talk about maybe just some personal things that parallel the kind of things that make that make me question certain things. Like uh, he talks a lot about Bitcoin meant to be a capital capitalistic model. Right. Meaning that it's supposed to be more like a business. It's supposed to be competition in it. And people are supposed to make money from it. Whereas a lot of the uh, presentation of Bitcoin was this kind of more or less libertarian uh, type uh, situation where it was more about privacy and economic freedom and freedom away from regulation and governments and a variety of things. But it is interesting to see that even though Bitcoin is not supposed to be a capitalistic model, if you go with that philosophy of it, it still plays out very much like one, right? We still have a large amount of uh, centralization in it. We still have uh, uh, a, 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 um, a concentration of wealth and power in it, um, you know, and, and so we still have these wells that dominate uh, the, the, the Bitcoin markets and a variety of things. So it plays out still like a very capitalistic model, even though it's not meant to be so that that makes me come to two conclusions one either it was meant not to be a capitalistic model and it's failed at that or two is meant to be a capitalistic model and it plays out more and more like that so just something to think about but i definitely recommend watching this video you know i i think at the end of the day uh, you know, our job as investors and, and trying to gain education in this space is to come in and try to get as much education um, as we can. One problem I've heard I've had with the entire Craig Wright situation is that a lot of responses and a lot of the reactions to him have come across to me more from an emotional place. Right. Uh, the fact that they don't like him seems to take precedence over whether he's telling the truth or not for me in some cases. And I've seen that happen before where people were actually what they say they were. Uh, and it turned out to be that they were all those things, but they were jerks. Right. And, <laughs> and uh, I guess the point I'm making, you can be a jerk and you can be uh a person can still be who they say they are, although we may not want them to be that person. Right. So this is something I think that's going to be ongoing. I, I don't think I don't you know, I, like I said, I have been doing some research and evidence and looking to a variety of things about correct. Right. But I don't really think it's going to ever be a satisfaction, a complete satisfaction of um, evidence uh, with Craig Wright. Uh, and, I, and I also think a lot of it's going to play into a lot of people just don't want it to be right. So I don't know if it's going to ever be enough satisfying evidence, um, you know, unless uh, now he does have these little bits and pieces of evidence. There's, there's certain domains that is proof he's taken out. There are certain uh, if you're a group, if you're operating as a group. Uh, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just go in and sign a wallet or start moving Bitcoin and doing a variety of things like that right now? 
I'm not a super technical person. And um, in, a, in a big arrangement like something like what you might have with Bitcoin, uh, I'm not certain on how the, it would work exactly their arrangement, how they can go into these variety of accounts and, and things like that. Um, I, I've heard several ways they could go about it um, and get access to these accounts. But uh, I will just say this, and that is that uh, I find it very unlikely that nobody knew who Satoshi was. Nobody has uh, access to his account. Uh, I, I just find something this big, very, very unlikely that he would be able to keep this this big of a secret without telling his family or some close associates or friends and making some arrangement and agreement with them, in which case it might be more than one person involved. Um, and it could very well be that these people are now talking after these years, right? At some point, you would think they would have to. But I just want to put that out there real quick. I'm going to leave a link in the description about this video. You guys watch it. I like to hear your opinions um, about it. But his the the entire idea he gives about how exchanges are being run like casinos and they feel like bucket shop shops, I believe that's the term you use for it. Um and, and how I see the behavior of the market, the manipulation in the watch tree and a variety of things like that, uh, and the severity to where it's getting. Uh it how some the things he says in this video, I, I have to agree with a lot of them. Uh, that, yeah, we need to take a step back and, and see what needs to be done. In some cases, there might be a need for regulation, at least at the exchange level, right? It should, we should maybe hold exchanges to the highest levels of, of regulation, um, right? And uh, uh, that, that might actually be the way things are going to be going anyway. But guys, that's all I want to say in this video. If you like content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe. Don't forget to check out my project, Bitcoin MYK, which I think operates and works in a much better way in the crypto world, how things should work. You can check it out. You can be the judge of that. Let us know. But until next time, guys, take care.